Well, good afternoon, everyone. It's Saturday afternoon now, and uh, welcome back to Piccadilly. Now, I'm going to start thinking about um, sort of painting this and distressing it and making it look a little more realistic. Now, first job is that obviously all these are cast sections of concrete um, and they will crack. So I'm going to use, oh, that was a bit big, wasn't it? A scalpel. It's all a bit close to the camera, isn't it? And I'm just going to go in at varying places and literally just score. Okay, just create some crack lines in varying places. Nothing massively complicated about it. But this, again, isn't going to be a quick job. It is going to take a little while. Okay, I'm not going to do it over every single piece. Um, but I think it would good would look good particularly on the outside of the track because obviously the shed is going to finish here that's where the lift goes down um, just in case any of you are not sure yeah see that so that's obviously got to be it's got to have some weathering here and a bit towards the outside I'll do a little bit in the middle um, as if something's dropped a um, piece of machinery has been dropped on the floor that type of thing it would crack inside, but I think it's going to crack more on the outsides where you're going to see it. And, and it will look more pleasurable that way anyway, because you're not going to see the inside of the shed very much, um, to be honest, because the, the shed itself is going to be in the way. But as you can see, all I'm doing is with the scalpel, I'm literally just um, just scratching lines in. And then when I've done one line, it's almost like creating little tree shapes if I'm honest so I'm not going to do too much just I'll have one across there from one side to the other and another one coming there um, I'm going to leave that panel and I'll just have one little bit coming here what I think I will do is just dig out a bit so I'm literally just going to stab the scalpel in Hopefully you can see what I'm doing there. Just digging a bit out really. Again, not too deep, but just the odd little bit here and there, just to create a little bit of extra interest. And I'll have another scratch line coming off there. I'll dig a bit out at this point. Well, I think you get the idea there, don't you? So, right, all that's done, as I showed you before. Okay, um, still needs sort of smoothing down a bit. But my next stage is to seal it. Um, I have had a couple of comments of people worrying about that it's going to lift. I think it'll be all right. If I seal it now, um, all the way along, both back, as far down into the gap as I can get it. Obviously, I've got to be careful of the tracks and particularly where the joints are concerned. I don't want varnish seeping down into the fish plates and create electrical problems. But I think if I'm if I'm relatively careful going over the whole thing, it should be absolutely fine. So there you are. You can get a better idea of the scratches and the marks that I've put into it now. So hopefully you can see like here, there, just a few every now and again, nothing significant, but that's obviously got to dry. Now, obviously this end is a lot more damaged and, and um, uh, because I just think it will look an awful lot more interesting next to the doors. So I've done all that. Uh, I think it's important that you give it a good couple of coats just to make sure it's as sealed as possible. And then what I did do is I used an old washing up brush just to rub down through the tracks just like that uh, to get rid of any pooling varnish that was between the track and the uh, internal hard standing the internal bit there so I'm going to leave that for about another 15 minutes or so to dry off I think most of it should be dry in that time and uh, then we'll start thinking about actually applying some paint okay I'll see you in a minute okay welcome back so 
as you like you can see I've that's all finished now and dried and I've also gone over and I think it's important that you clean the tracks regularly when you're doing this sort of thing because if you leave it to the last minute there can be a build-up particularly in areas like that where there's a gap in the track the last thing is you want a build-up going down in there and it it's um, mucking up the fish plate because you stand absolutely Buckley's chance of getting any more power into there if you know it's, it's got to work you'd have to you'd have to dig it all up and put a dropper in which would be a nightmare so i'm trying really really hard to keep the paint as thin as i dare um, just literally color it around those areas and that's all okay but i've put two coats on all these areas these wider areas and one coat on that bit there and as i said run the big brush along just to get rid of any extra residue. Okay, now I'm ready to start painting now. So I'm gonna use a whole assortment of things. Incidentally, I've just removed this, the um, guard from over there, just in case you hadn't noticed, because I need access, obviously. So what I'm gonna do, first of all, is mix up a bit of this, which is going to be my base concrete color. It is a little bit on the pale side, but it'll be all right, with some glycerin. Now, the reason for doing that is it will give an extra drying time. It won't be, it won't dry anything like as quick as it normally would. And that should just give me a while longer. Not a massive amount, but um, enough to start getting wet on wet type techniques. Um, those of you into painting pictures, um, a wet on wet technique is where you um, put obviously a surface of paint down and it's wet and then you put another surface of paint on over the top and you allow the paints to sort of bleed and blend together naturally. Um, although I'm not going to do exactly that I don't want the paints to sort of basically I'm going to keep the paints quite thick um, in the main um, apart from apart from these joints which I shall run a bead of um, something like a null oil around in there or something like that anyway we'll see about that in a minute but uh yeah we'll get the base coats on first and then we'll take it from there all right right so i'm just gonna i've got an old yogurt pot i like yogurt <laughs> all right so i'm i'm literally just going to put in a small amount in there not a lot it goes a long way this stuff that's just vegetable glycerin Bought it for the airbrush actually. And oh yeah, I was gonna use some of this, wasn't I? Now I am gonna put quite a bit in there. Now this is the um this one is the uh high, high viscosity one. Now I've put the tiniest, tiniest drop of water in there. I hope you can see that. Because I really, really, really want this to remain reasonably thick. So I'm just going to mix that up. Now, for this bit, I'm literally just going to paint down the bottom, all over the top, just to give a basic coat. I'm really not worried at this stage about doing a complete coverage. Uh, I know you can't see what I'm doing down the back there, but I'm literally just painting on the ends. Paint that side there and also at the end there and at the end in the middle. Just this one to do. And then I'll go off cam and get the rest done. So I'm literally just giving that a bit of a cover. As you can see, it's not, it's not a complete coverage, but because this is the high density um, version of the paint it it does go a long way now what I will do although I don't have to paint down the edge of the lift here I will do um, because the building is going to go up against the edge there and again I will lower the lift in fact I'll do that now so I will lower that and just paint in there and I've done the I've done the ends of the lift section by taking it down a bit lower as well 
Right, so as you can see, I've now gone all the way along. I'll just pan you across so you can hopefully see that all the way up there. And it is very much wet. OK, as I said, it would be um, because of the glycerin. All right. Now, what I'm going to do now is take some of this colour, which is an emulsion. And I've it was coming to the end of its life, so I watered it down a little bit. So it's a lot thinner than it would be if you bought it straight from the shop. And I'm going to put an amount on this scrap piece of card. Now, using a piece of foam, um, this came with some packaging. I can't think what for. So I'm just going to get an amount of paint on there. Make sure that it covers. And then dab it off. Literally just going to dab it on just to create a surface. Now, because this has got a bit of a straight edge on it, I want it, I'm just turning it in the varying directions and literally dabbing it on. So turning the sponge as you can see, so you don't end up with this hard edge, if you like. Now, some people have suggested um, cutting and using the end of the sponge in a dome shape and doing it sort of like that, if you like, if you pardon the way I've just showed you there. But because I don't want paint to go down into the gaps too much, I'm using the flat edge of this, which I think is probably better for my circumstance. So it is literally just a case of dabbing it on. Right, next. Now I did say I was going to start putting the lines on, but actually what I think would be good is if I use some of this, I say black, but actually it's more green. Um, it's all right if I put it on straight, and I put it so that it's, um, you know, I paint it straight on and leave it and it dries black. But if I mix it with anything else, it goes, it goes um, green or stays green. So what I'm going to do is I'm just literally, just as I've done before, dab, dab off the excess onto this piece of card. And I'm literally just going to just touch in varying places, not too far just a little bit all the way up just the tiniest tiniest little bit and then where it's created a few lines just turn the sponge and get rid of those right there we are so far so it does look a little bit diseased at the minute but i assure you once all the divisions have been put in it will start to come to life a little bit so there's brown bits in it there's gray bits in it and there's a tiny little bit of um, whitey gray as you can see okay so what I've done now is I'm going to start using the greeny black that I've got before mixed up some water so I'm going to put an amount in there to make up a very weak solution Okay, so I've mixed up some greeny black now and quite a watery liquid. And this will take a while. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is paint down the gaps. And the idea is that it doesn't sit so much on the top, but it actually seeps down into the gaps. And I will be also be going over the cracks that I've put in. And we'll take those from there so you can I'll just do a little bit for you so I'm just going to paint that along there so hopefully you can see it's not sitting so much on the surface but it is sort of seeping in you can sort of blend your lines out a little bit so I'm just sort of going along in fact I'd like to make it a bit dark or oh, I'm doing that one but it's the, <laughs> I don't need to do that one do I swear the lift is So it's literally just a case of going along each one 
everywhere there is a gap and darkening it down a bit. And go over the, the crack bits as well where the, get, where the gaps are and hopefully they come out a bit more as well so you can see those areas. I mean, the truth of the matter is, in N-Gage, you're probably not going to notice this so much. But also taking the opportunity just to darken up and make each slab just a little bit more individual. Not too much, obviously. Just dab that over my finger, blend it out a bit. And I'm only doing that bit towards the end there. Like I said, just going along into the gaps and let it seep in. Okay. Right, there it is so far. So you can see I've gone along and put all the different lines across. And what I ended up doing was just blot them with the sponge just different places so it's not quite so pronounced but what I think um, because the paint has been a bit a bit thick it's actually obliterated all the all the cracks that I put <coughs> excuse me all the cracks I put in so what I'll do is go over that with a sharp pencil and go each of, go across each of these lines just to emphasize that they're there Right, we're getting closer now to the finished item. We're not quite there yet. But as I said before, um, a lot of the cracks that I'd put in with the scalpel have somehow got filled up with the paint, which I am a little bit disappointed about. But this is how it happens sometimes. I don't do this exact task every single day. Anyway, so what I'm going to use is I'm going to use my tri-square and also a very sharp pencil. Put that onto the gap. I'm using the tri-square obviously because I want them straight and level and I'm literally just going to go over every single one of these joints. Um, not on camera I might add. <laughs> um, actually I, I'm doing that one but it's that's where the that's where the lift goes up and down so I suppose I'm just emphasizing the gap really. So let's do that one again make that a bit more prominent and that one's all a bit wonky let's make that one a bit straighter as well that's better I'll just do one more of these on camera that is so I'm literally just working my way across with the pencil trying to follow the lines which are already there like that so you can certainly get the impression that there's something happening there. Now with the cracks, I'm literally just going to draw with the pencil back on again. Actually, I'll sharpen that again. So these cracks would be very, very fine indeed. So I'm literally just drawing along. Just a little one across there. I'm not going to put too many on, obviously, because I don't want it to look as if it's literally just about to fall apart. You can certainly see those on the camera, can't you? So I'm going to go up the whole section now. I'm just putting a few. I'm not going to put in too many, like I said. I just want to give the impression that it's just a used area, but certainly go along every single one of these lines. Okay, I'll get that done, I'll come back to you shortly. Okay, then we're getting close to the finish. Now, what I do need to do, there's a couple of things I want to do, and that is I'm going to now spray the inside of the track, not a massive amount, um, because it's just to indicate that trains could come in here and they could possibly stop at any point so I just want to darken down the middle section of the track not make it completely black not everywhere anyway um, 
but also in particular on the outside stretch and maybe just inside the shed just put some indication of weeds that would be growing i do want to put some up here uh, where the shed doors would be and around the shed but i'm just going to leave that little bit until the shed is in and then i can soon put those on much much easier but certainly around here um, obviously I'm not going to put any next to the track, although there probably would be some, but a train would, a real train would just crush them, but a model train would derail because obviously the, the scale, the scale strength of each of these items is totally out of proportion. So I can't put anything right up close, but I can get it reasonably close to the railhead. Um, and that's just going to be a little bit of flock here and also at the other end in some of these cracks areas as well so just run a bead of glue i'll show you that in a minute anyway let's do this bit first so i'm just going to spray the inside of the track Oops. Right, the last little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a little bit of glue on the end of the brush. And hopefully you can see me doing this, but I'm literally just going to dab on the little bits here and there, not everywhere by any means. Just a little bit of glue. But having said that, I am going to have all of that up there with a bit of glue in it. Won't go over the rail, not over this bit or that bit. So I'm going to suggest that the grease and oil coming out of the locomotives would kill any um, plant life. Just dab it on, dab it on. Uh, Got some really light. Oh, I'm sorry about that. It's the camera is set so far away. Um, I'm holding it probably around about 18 inches away from the camera at the minute. But I'm just going to sprinkle just a tiny little bit of that on. I think the lighter stuff shows up better on a darker surface. Although I will put some dark on as well and then just go over with the vacuum cleaner. So I'll turn out my fingers, it's so small. I am sorry if you're struggling to see this, but all I'm doing is literally just taking a little bit of the flock and pressing it into the glue. And I'm obviously going to do the same at the other end. Um, I'm not going to put, I will put a little bit just inside the shed, but not an awful lot. So I'm gonna, just going to run a tiny little bit There we are, that's it finished for the time being. So you can see I vacuumed the weeds up now, so it's a lot more subtle. And obviously this area will be ballasted in the near future. When the shed's gone in, I will ballast this and scenic up this area here, like I said, with the relay boxes and the cable trunking and all the rest of it. And the line side hut maybe, so all that up there. And that area up there. So again, just a subtle amount of weeds, not very many at all. But I'm quite pleased with that. I did do a slightly heavier patch of dark just at the ends here where the locomotives would stop. And a little bit of a heavier patch just there, again, for the same reason, for the dropping of oil. Kept the other side a little bit cleaner, but it's just all to give that indication, isn't it? 
I mean, you get whole tracks where you've just got this like brown, this dark browny black smear going all the way up the middle of the track. So I suppose it's that indicate that really. All right. Anyway, I'm going to end this video just there. So I hope you've enjoyed this little mini series of building the hand behind the hard standing. I know there are many, many ways of doing it. Um, some people use plaster of Paris. Some people use filler. I've used card. Um, some people use kits like the um, uh, Metcalf kits. What you do is entirely up to you. It's your it's your layout, um, you know. But uh, so we, we each choose what the methods we want to use. Anyway, I'm now going to get these tracks cleaned once again, and then hopefully I'll have something running, and I'll just finish the the video with a little running shot of something going up and down there. All right. I'll catch you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye then. I hope you've enjoyed this video. And if you have, please do like, subscribe and share. Not forgetting to click on that little bell to get regular notifications of any videos I upload. Some other videos are appearing on the screen right now which also might take your interest. Thanks once again and bye for now.